The topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio or its employees or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Welcome to Triversity Talk. It's me, Wendy Stewart, and I am tonight. I am in New York City, but we are, in a way, bringing the show back home. Uh, my guest tonight, who I'm not going to tell you about yet, but um, I met her at an art show in Narrowsburg, New York. Uh, for any of you who don't know about Narrowsburg, it's up in Sullivan County. So it is the upstate New York area and is absolutely beautiful. And uh, during COVID, people from Brooklyn moved there in the droves. So there you have it, but more on that later. So I hope everybody is having a very good week. Uh, this show is named after, of course, Triversity, our LGBTQ center in Milford, Pennsylvania. And we've really been doing some great projects there lately. We're trying to spread love in the community. And our executive director this week, Taylor James, uh, was partnering with the Methodist Church. And they were doing a program with kids painting rocks and having beautiful words written on those rocks, like love equals love, and to spread joy in the community and leave the rocks around. So um, I talk about the rocks because they're artwork, all right? The colors that people have chosen, the things they're painting, and the words. And the arts have become more and more important in people seeking safe spaces. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the Hannah Q Dance Company, she's giving a beautiful performance with her dancers in Milford, Pennsylvania on Friday night. I bring that up because she also creates safe spaces through dance. So um, my guest tonight, I can thank a wonderful person, a reporter, a photographer, and an all-around great human being, Jonathan Charles Fox, and his amazing Dharma the Wonder Dog. He is a local personality in upstate New York and a personality in my life. He said to me, we are doing this incredible art show in Narrowsburg, New York, and it's called Come As You Are, and I, I love the title. And he told me, you have to meet the curator of the show, the, the work is great. And she really rocks it out, literally. And I said, great. And I went up to the show and I loved the work by all the artists. And in some of Jonathan's work, of course, were local drag personalities that I know and love. So without further ado, I'd like you all to welcome curator Jody Sibilia. Hello, everybody. So nice to be here. Thank you, Wendy, for having me. I really appreciate that. Well, you had me at your art show, and in, that's called the uh, Narrowsburg Union Gallery. Uh, am I correct? The gallery is at the Narrowsburg Union at the Narrowsburg Union. First of all, I want to, um, I was very excited that you were putting on a show with a title like Come As You Are. I think um, more and more as we become diverse and, and open up our worlds and our platforms, it really is about people being their authentic selves. And I can't think of a better way to share that authenticity without having a, an, an art show. So thank you for putting it together. Absolutely. We really appreciate it. So um, initially, how did you get involved with doing this art show? So I've been a teacher for quite a few years in upstate New York. I taught public school in high school and uh, elementary school. And one of the things that really <clears throat> drew me to the type of community that I was looking for for this particular show was how I really wanted my artists to feel like they were in a safe space, not only in the studio when I was working with them in my art room, 
as children and young adults, but also in the community as a whole. So looking at, okay, how can I bring this diversity into a gallery space? And then what, can, what are we all trying to say? Looking at all the artwork that I got from the, the artists that submitted work, how does this tell a story of who we are as people and a community? And I can't be happier with how the show came out. It actually was absolutely gorgeous. The narrative as you walk around just makes sense. And it's it, like it's a narrative that really, you know, often you go to shows and <clears throat> one thing doesn't connect to another. What was so interesting about this show was the way it flowed and, and what the art said. Yes, I couldn't agree more. And the flavor, I'll say, of all the different artwork and how it worked together, we had abstract pieces and uh, very personal pieces about Thank abuse you. and trauma. And then we also had the street art vibe going. And it was it just made sense for the human condition as a total umbrella. And it was a, a really gorgeous show. It came out great. The way that I got involved with it was I'm part of a lot of LGBTQ plus communities on Facebook. And I was sitting here going, you know, how can I get more involved with this particular community and bring it into a platform to give a voice and then to not only give a voice, but to show up for their artwork and for what we're trying to say. Oh, so, yeah. So, I mean, the vibe was great. The vibe that was there was uh, great. And um, I love the fact that you gave it to the local community um, so often, especially in rural areas. And I know this from working with Triversity. Uh, a lot of the things that we read about that are awful that are happening between New York and California and in all those middle states are actually happening in upstate and in Pennsylvania and um, art, of course, and having people express themselves in that way is really a great way, not only to communicate, but to give support. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And one of the things that makes me different as a curator is that I am working with anybody who is starting out their journey or is, you know, getting those first few stepping stones, those few first few gallery shows, it's a really exciting, but also confusing time. So I'm very supportive of artists who come to me and they want to show. And um, one of the things that I do is I open it up to pretty much anybody who wants to try, right? You want to show me what you're working with and I will go through the steps with you kind hearted. I'm, you know, not going to rip you apart. I'm very gentle. I, I think that's a teacher in you, by the way, you know, to, that's Sorry. the teacher in you. That is the teacher in me, but it's important because I think like as artists, young artists, artists that are just starting out in their career at any age, yeah. it can be intimidating to stand on, on this, you know, so-called stage where you're having everyone critique and pick Not it up you. and they're gonna like it. Yeah. Yeah. And so one of the things that's that's unique is that I opened the show up with no age limit on it. And I actually got a young lady who applied who's in high school and was very open about her relationship with her partner and wanted to draw a picture about this and actually submitted that to the show. And that's empowering when children are standing up for like what they feel inside mm -hmm. and want to express that on canvas or paper or however. And then I have the opportunity to make that a reality, to say, these are your words. This is your creative vision and I want to 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 celebrate that and not oh, shut you down at all like that right. needs to grow right this person was 17 years old so I'm thinking she's in high school yes and yeah. we, we all you know we read and we know what's been going on with a lot of the school boards mm -hmm. and um it's really awful you talk to the kids that are in the the high schools and what's happening to them and here you are providing support and a platform for her to put up a drawing about her and her partner. She can't express that in her school. I would like to say 10 years ago, I actually think it was easier. I know we had like GSAs and everything else. Now I'm, you know, I can't believe what I'm seeing and hearing when I even go to YouTube and I look at some of the um, school board meetings that they have and what people are saying, they're being recorded. It's on YouTube. And I think, my God, these kids that are in those schools should, you know, be embraced. Instead, they're really being made to feel less than or different. So art is really a wonderful way to say, hey, you know what, just come on board. We're all we're all in this together. Absolutely. And, and come as you are. 
which is right. the, whole, the whole point of the show. Just come as you are. And this and, you know, that kind of branches off into my time spent in public school. So recently I was in a position and it was a public school position and I had over 600 students on my roster. Oh, my God. That's so too many. That's a week. It was 600 students a week. And um, the budget alone will make you sad because it was about $5 per child for the year. Oh my God. <laughs> they all have crayons for that. I know $5 is one pack of, of color pencils with any sort of quality to it. We're not talking, right. about, you know, so um, that was a struggle in itself. Like, how do I, how do I facilitate that? But then you, you're looking at all these individual children with all these individual needs. How do I make the art room a safe space? space for them to come and express themselves. That's a big ask as an adult for a child, right? Come in and I want you to be totally vulnerable in your artwork and feel like you can trust me. And that's a huge deal. And I feel like as we went through the pandemic, we were offline and then, you know, off out of, out of campus. And then we came back in really slowly. Oh my goodness. To trust, right. To trust that you can trust an adult who's in front of the classroom, who's going to take care of you emotionally as you're going through an artistic journey. Right. That's a big ask. And, it's a big and, ask and you're sharing, you're asking them to share their emotions and their deepest feelings. And, um, I'm curious, did you, the, so how long were the kids out of school for? Let's just talk about that. Well, we closed, um, actually this week, three years ago. Right. Okay. So this yeah, right. Is March anniversary March. of everything shutting down. Right. And then we came back staggering, like weird groups of kids that yeah. I mean, I mean, at that time I was seeing maybe like four percent in the classroom. And then it slowly the were home, right? Because they were doing like high this hybrid. hybrid. I know. And I feel like um we've kind of like as a society, we're trying not to talk about it. But that's trauma. Like, Jody, you're so oh, <laughs> thank you. The elephant in the room. Yeah. Like, I will continue to talk about it. And I'm yeah. not letting it go because yeah. it's society has changed. And these yeah. children have been affected by it. Absolutely. So then, you know, I was teaching online, which I absolutely love. I still do that. I actually teach um, for another company online. And I enjoy it because talk about a safe, intimate space right. for these students to ask questions. They don't feel judged. They're in the safety of the privacy of their own home. They're just talking to me and a few other students. It is amazing. Amazing. Right. That is a good so, thing. Yeah. And it, it, there are, have been branches out of that pandemic of that really tough situation where we have seen healing in a different way. Right. So those smaller class sizes that are online where we're just exploring and having fun with the materials and learning different processes and different artists and things like that. So we didn't fully come back until I want to say we were all back and wearing masks in about, I want to say April of 2021. So that they were, such, I mean, think about that. That's such a long time. And, you know, if you have kids, especially young kids that are unsure of their sexuality and now they're home. Okay. Which is not a safe space often. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. they Sometimes it is, but for those kids not being in your art room and being home where they might be ridiculed or they have to like hide who they hide. are, yeah. no one is talking yeah. about that, like what these mm -hmm. children have been through. And then we come back and now we have school boards, you know, shooting down wonderful books, shooting down critical thinking and telling kids, no, we don't, we don't need a GSA. We, we have a diversity group. That's all we need. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I absolutely agree. It, it was a very traumatizing thought. Um, while, while teachers were going through it, because we're empathetic human beings. Like we, all we want is the best for these kids. We of want course. to give them a safe space. It's the system that makes it so hard. You know, yeah. the, the entire time, oh, teachers were, were chastised and then we were praised and then we were chastised and then we were blamed. And, and it was just, why is all this pressure on the teacher who is 99% of this is all out of our control. And I know from my perspective, having so many students on my roster, I wanted nothing more than to have them in my safe space, working on art, expressing themselves and, and going deeper into like, okay, I'm okay here. 
you know, like we feed them three, you know, two meals a day at least. And then their snacks and things we provide just basic necessities. But love is also a basic necessity. Okay. It really is. Right. Right. So and can- I'm curious if, um, because I had heard there were parents that were actually unappreciative of what the teachers uh, were doing. And I know in the school out where we were in Milford in the high school, uh, the parents uh, were attacking the teachers and the teachers were the ones, this really blew me away, who chipped in to get the bus driver's masks. That is absolutely incredibly insane to me that the bus drivers, you know, no one is talking about all the components of what happened. There's and so much. There's so, so much. much, much that the bus drivers had to rely on the teachers to get them masks. What, you know, what the schools weren't doing it. And the parents, I, I know there were a lot of, I know a lot of wonderful parents that did oh, of jump course, in, of course. But, you, but you still have such an ilk out there. And um, it is really absolutely amazing to me. It is. And it's, it's sad, you know, it's, it is sad. So like th- talking about materials, right. So the budgets didn't change. If anything, we were told to be more conservative, right? So when the, the pandemic hit and we had, some of the kids were there, some of them weren't, we were told be more conservative with your budget. Like, like pretend that like you will get nothing the next year because we didn't know where the chips were going to fall. So you're talking about that five dollar uh, box of crayons is now two dollars and fifty cents. The, the the real crummy ones. Remember when you were a kid when you got oh, the yeah. ones that came with the coloring book? I think there yes. were like four colors. That's it. That's all you get. That's but they were telling us be more conservative, like really, really focus on what you need and what you don't need. And so, of course, as the art person in the building, the one who's thinking out of the box constantly, oh, I can make art out of leaves, out of rocks, out of this, out of, but they can't share it. Yeah. They can't share it during a pandemic. Right. The kids who touch the leaf are not, we're not allowed to touch the same leaf. So right. I, oh. it, it was like compounding upon compounding in the art room. When you think about you know, those basic needs and you think about just like your safety, it's paramount, right? Like beyond anything, you need to be safe. The next thing is just having basic supplies. In order for me to provide crayons, I would have to either sanitize the crayons in between each class. Now we're talking seven classes a day that I saw for 30 minutes, 33 minutes. So you're talking about that. So then you have, um, you can either sanitize them or each class has to have their own set of, each person has to have their own set of crayons. And That's then, what I was thinking, that it, but then that gets into expense, doesn't it? You can't, you, I couldn't do it. I can't yeah. afford 600, I couldn't afford 600, right. you know, crayons. So what ended up happening is what we saw as a, as a group, right? Especially the special teachers like music and library and things like that. We saw that these kids were really having um, issues coming back into a regular school setting, which is this is, talking about diversity, right? We're talking across the board, everything you can possibly think of. So they're coming back and they're struggling with social cues, manners, understanding what's expected of them, because these things are, are in a society, we help each other grow that way. We, we say, this is what's expected. This is what we won't tolerate right. and things like that. I'm just talking a basic level of sit yeah. down, stand up, don't scream, don't punch, don't bite. There's so much of that going on so much of that going on right now. The kids that were um, LGBTQ, and what grades are we talking? I think third grade on upward you did? What- I did um, kindergarten, first special ed, all the way up to sixth. Okay, so my God, you've got something for everyone there. Yes. For kids that were LGBTQ, what kinds of things did you observe when they came back to school? Um, I observed mostly... Well, so this was kind of it. It was a, a, this is where I was headed. There was a culture shock, right? Because you're, you're coming from your family or your living situation, whatever that happened to be. Then you're coming into a building where you have an adult that maybe, you know, probably you don't know because you've been out of school for so long. Right. And then all of a sudden it was like culture shock. It was, oh my gosh, why are there so many people? And for the first like couple weeks, it was great. Like everyone was like, nervous and and kind of like what do we do but they wanted to be there you could see the yeah, excitement and then everything was mirrored in our society 
in the classroom. It was like that. It was like one day you just came in on a Monday going, okay, everyone's happy to be here. And then you looked around, you went, oh my goodness, what just happened? It was like this group and this person and this person, and this person, and they, they, there's the fighting, the cursing, the screaming. Like, I can't imagine anyone feeling safe in that environment. Of ever. Like ever. Is you getting getting some bullying? Bullying was constant. It is constant. Oh, bullying. Yeah. Wow. And we're talking like young, young, like you're, you. like you're thinking in your head, okay, well, I can see sixth grade. They're in middle school. No, I'm right, talking about kindergarten. First, <sighs> kindergarten, first grade, vicious, not understanding what they're saying, not understanding the ramification. And it's so interesting because you don't know when you're in kindergarten or first grade, you don't know where you're going. You don't know how you're going to feel in a few years. You don't know how you're going to change. I mean, you like peas one day. Now you hate them. Like that's just how it is. Right. So, so you don't know. Um, and then what happens when you're in that environment and you're the one who's been bullying and picking on because you fit in now, but now you don't because your preferences have changed. Your ideas have changed. Your body has changed. Your mind has changed. Everything's changed, right? And that's what we started seeing in, in, as you got in an older grade from this like pandemic culture shock is like, oh, wait a second. Now I'm going to be even more verbal about my distrust or my my not liking. Yeah, yeah. And more hostile. And more hostile. And you watch the divides happen. Um I can talk about uh, my LGBTQ and um, especially my trans students because we had openly trans students um, when I was teaching. And how, uh, how old were those kids? Fifth and sixth, really. Fifth. You started to see the the transitioning of like the names, the pronouns, and things like that a little bit earlier. And it really depended on you know the family and how accepting of of that they were and. Um, what was interesting and probably the hardest thing is I am, I am one of the most respectful human beings. Like of course. respect is paramount, right? You can't, you can't go on and live a, a healthy life if you're not being respectful. So when, you know, these kids would come to me and they would have changed a pronoun personally, the school wasn't able to do that or something. So you would accidentally this. You'd make mistakes and the, but it's not like the kid understands they're kids. They don't understand that you're calling, you know, a, 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 their female assigned, you know, name at birth or whatever. And, and they've changed that name. You have no idea because your roster is black and white and that's the way it goes. Right. They're not accommodating it with the roster as they don't accommodate with the bathrooms. Yeah. Yeah. That's that in itself is a nightmare in itself. Yeah. I agree. So how, how did you deal with that? Well, I left education. So I guess you can say like, that was my, no, I couldn't I can some understand. Point. I mean, thank you, first of all, for underlying uh, so many of the things that came down and with everything you're saying, you would think that there would be a um, rebound in society after what children have gone through. And instead is they're making it worse. But they're I making feel- it worse. I, I agree. I do feel like there is a rebound happening. It's like there's there's a group of of loud, <laughs> obnoxious women and men and people who don't want to sit down and take it. They don't. So you know right. what they do? They leave the system or they show up and smile and then decide whatever they're going to do while they're in that system of education. And I'm talking right. the broad system of education. I'm just talking about education. So you have... These, these strong, smart, educated, powerful, internally powerful people leaving. You have yeah. the empaths leaving. Yeah. So you're going, so it's not, so ignore that for just a second. What are we all doing? Right? right. What are we doing? And we're creating gallery shows that are all inclusive. We're creating online classes that are all inclusive. We are going above and beyond to tip the scale. Because that system is is broken, and there's it has to start from the government and filter all the way down, and the likelihood that's ever going to happen is slim. So well, thank you first of all for everything that you're doing, and the people I know that are all doing a, what I call outside enrichment. Let's just use a <laughs> uh, a very neutral term like that. I think what is scary though about public education, and this is something I know 
those very loud groups that you're talking about who are small, but they're very loud and their um, focus is to defund public education, Jody. And I know you heard this already. Oh, yeah. This is thing's going on. I'm an art teacher. <laughs> They've been defunding me since before I began. Like, I before, understand. But now their goal politically yeah. is to defund how things are being taught, what public education is. Mm -hmm. And um, that is such a scary thing. I, went, I mean, I went to public school the whole way through. And to think that people have gotten that leg up and that kind of power, I, you know, I have to tell you what's been going on in Florida. We, we all read it and you know, that, that, that governor is going to run for president. And in my, you know, my friends, my, all my liberal friends say, oh, he's not going to get in. I, you know, I'm never sure. That's all I can tell you. you never never sure. So when I see someone like yourself, who's doing outside projects, uh, creating supportive atmospheres. I think we are going to need more and more people like that to offset, you know, the negativity out there. It's very, very hard for kids, first of all, when they're adolescents. And it's very hard for kids that are LGBTQ without support. This conversation we're having, I honestly, like six years ago, thought it was over and done with. When Triversity started, our biggest group was was kids. And that was 12 years ago. And they, we had a GSA in the high school. There was a need uh, for our kids. And we had a wonderful person, uh, Sarah, who I don't know if you know her, she was local um, and she did all kinds of art projects with the kids. And she really filled a need in our community. And then things changed and that the kids didn't need it so much anymore. Everyone was really becoming accepting. And I heard things like, yeah, you know what? No one, you know, polarizes us. We're, it's all good. Now I fast forward to like really the last three years and certainly, oh my God, the last two with the banning of books. And you say to yourself, how, how the heck did this happen? We've gone backwards, way backwards. And who knows what's, you know, who knows what's going to be next. Now, when you first started advertising this um, art show, did you get a lot of applicants? Well, it always goes like this. You hope you get somebody, right? So I, I put it out there and uh, every week I would do a call to artists every week. Boom, boom, boom. And then about that last week when the due date is like right oh, there. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's when all the creative people go, I work best under pressure. And so they, you know, send what they need. And, um, and I'm used to that because as, as, uh, as long as I've ever been in the arts and, you know, just watching it, like I have the type A teacher brain, but most right. artists don't have the teacher brain. So they're like, like I'm submitted the, the day of, right? Like, right. Like the day the call comes out, I'm like, okay, it's done. I don't have to think about it, but I know that it, it trickles in. And I will tell you, I got most of my artists that last week. And I even got some amazing work after the deadline. Is it well, isn't that great? You know, yeah, it absolutely was. It yeah, isn't absolutely. that great. Um, so did you get any pushback locally for doing an art show that was, I mean, Narrowsburg is pretty cool. Narrowsburg's really cool. Um, it's very up and coming. There's a lot of city influence. Um, yeah, I said they're leaving Brooklyn in droves to go to Narrowsburg. They are, but you know what else is Calicoon is yeah, a giant cool. hub for LGBTQ. They have um, the Drag Nights over at the Western. I saw over there. Uh, they had a Pride Festival that that my partner and I went to, and it, it was just like. Oh, where did this come from in upstate New York? Like we weren't expecting that. I'm from Vermont. I knew about so. Calicoon. I knew of everyone's knew like that. Is, it is. It's like an, an amazing pocket and it's very cool. And interesting you mentioned Calicoon because uh, Jonathan Charles Fox, a number, I, I was like, when did he shoot all these drag queens? And because I'm like, I think I'm at most local drag things, mm -hmm. but I don't haul the way to Calicoon. And yeah. um, he did more than a few people were, were at Calicoon, which I, you know, that's on my radar now. I have to find out when yeah. they're, their drag, when do they do their uh, drag festival? I believe it's in Pride. June, which June okay. is like Pride. I know. I'm, I'm inundated in the city. <laughs> it's such a, 
a, t a terrible month for me. Well, I, you know what? I'm going to have um, Juan run the, the show with some of the art pieces and we'll briefly discuss each one. And if you okay. can remember the artist, please, you know, please, please tell me. Oh, yeah. yeah. I do my best. Again, um, yeah, if yeah, they were yeah. at the opening. Okay. So, so um, I love, I love this piece. What, what does it say? Killing a man is one thing. Loving his wife is another. <laughs> <laughs> and I, so I, I, just, I thought this so was sorry. actually a piece that came in late. So it, um, it what almost wasn't in the show. And then I, I was able to meet the artist at the opening briefly, you know, I was running around, but it was, um, and they, she has more pieces and I, I can't wait to see her entire collection. Uh, that's the other that's thing. Like, that are like that because I right. love the collage aspect of that. Yeah. And, and, you know, just from an artistic standpoint, you have the textures in the dress, that pattern, and she's emulating yeah. that in the background and it just know. really flowed. <laughs> It right? absolutely did. Yeah. It's, and, and the other thing is it's very fifties. Oh yeah. You know, and you know, you know, that's not what's going on in that right. picture. Right. It was like something sexist. I'm sure, you know, oh, like, yeah. <laughs> right. it, was. it was something sexist, like leave him wanting more with this perfume. Right. Or something. Right. Maybe something. Or she, we discuss recipes as we work in the kitchen. Exactly. <laughs> something, something. So she turned it on its head and that was what was fun about this piece. Uh, right. I love the perspective of the artist. Okay. Let, uh, we'll see the next one. Okay. What's going on here? So this is a very talented artist. Um, Joseph, I, I, I've, I'm sorry with last names. Again, when you have 600 students a week, like I think part of your brain just goes. But, exactly. the, uh, <laughs> but so this is a painting, believe it or not, and it's the softest brush strokes I've ever seen compositionally. It's really fun. And um, this particular artist has a whole body of work of being outside. But the people were so expressive. It really was come as you are. It was this right. flavor that this artist had put on to these these cameos, these human beings that were part of these these works. He actually said to me, he goes, Oh, I have a lot of people who photobomb my paintings. <laughs> you know? So it was, it was very clever. Just really technically, this artist is like a very skillful technician, beautiful brushwork. Um, and and have, there's such joy in the character that he painted. Um, he looks like he's uh, gathered flowers that he's going to display. Yep. And uh, I believe the name of this was Daffy. So you kind of get that fun, playful, like Daffy Duck and then like, like the yeah, it's a daffodils a little and <laughs> right, for spring. Okay. And this is another one by Joseph. I've, again. I've heard. What's it, uh, can you remember his last name at all? He's not in the uh, brochure. No, that's because he submitted way after the event. But see, that's when you get the good ones is because, the oh, we missed it. And so I'm going to make sure. Um and good for you, Jody. I love your way of thinking because this thing deadlines. Yes, we all try and, and keep with them. But you're right. I mean, his work is fabulous. I love um, the whimsy and the attitude to his character. So this is like a very lecherous looking pirate. So this is yeah. So she's uh, dressed up for Halloween. But it was this male protagonist kind of like idea, right, of the costume being very masculine. And then, like yeah, I said, really and it, but it's it's a female. It's a it's a woman who, I guess, frequents their their home as a friend. And uh, he did another one of her in um in her mask with like a big poofy hat on. Oh, my gosh. It's just the amount of emotion that comes through. And then just this playfulness. It was really a joy. Yeah, there really is a joy. You, you can see. And I did not spot it as a woman initially. I didn't uh, spot that. Very, very cool painting. So his so, last name, before we move on, is his name is um, Joseph Bilger. B-I-L-G-E-R. Okay. And um, is this Quarantine Queen? He gave the names of some of his. Yes. Yeah. I believe this is Quarantine Queen. Quarantine Queen. <laughs> now it all makes sense. This is great. Oh, Quarantine Queen was the one with the purple hat. This one is Fathom 23, because probably talking about 23 Leagues of the Sea or something like that. Um, it's very fun. The names were great, like when they gave, when he gave them specifically. Yeah. I always struggle. As an artist, I struggle to name my things. I always want it to be untitled. Like, I'm like, you come up with the name. I give up. <laughs> I love that. Untitled. It's whatever you want it to be. Okay. 
next one. Oh I love my goodness. It. Yeah, gorgeous. So this artwork blew me away. So these were all titled Alter Ego for one, which I thought was really interesting. interesting. These are by Glenn Lieberman. Um, he's shown previously at the Narrisburg Galleries. And we're talking a technical beauty, right? This gorgeous black and white photography. Um, when you think about pride, you think about color. And there was just something so emotional and expressive right. and soft. And with, free. And free. And free, yeah. And free with the with the choice of going black and white. Which right. you don't you don't usually like black and white, you're photographing light, you're photographing people. When you're photographing color, you're you're photographing their clothes, right? And that's like one of the things that we say. I'm a silver gelatin person myself. So I'm a little <laughs> biased. A little bit. And it's interesting because she's dancing with a snake. Yeah, she is. Talk about, you know, you could get a, a religious sense of Adam and Eve and the temptation. Right. You could have this phallic masculinity, but you could also go yoga and go kundalini energy rising. From yeah, the, kundalini energy. Yeah, you, you could. Absolutely. Wow, that's a wonderful piece. Okay, sure. what's next? I love these. I love going through these. So this artist was new to me. Um, she came in uh, with just a couple of pieces, and I really thought they spoke to the body of the show so this one's titled rising tide by daniella okay and cooney and uh new new to to my scene um beautiful artwork and just like how you can tell like in the in the small body that she did she did submit to me you could tell it was that that rekindling of just like looking at nature as organic shape but then also adding form Right. And it's just how we all come from nature is what I really got from that work. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. So a yeah. nice, beautiful, you know, she did a great job with the values and the, and the form here and the shading and everything. It, made right. it, it actually looks like in the background, the form could be swimming in the water with mountains mm -hmm. behind her, or is it part of her body? You can't, you can't, you can't tell. tell. Yeah. And I believe this is a man. I'm not 1000% sure, but I'm, I'm going to go with that. I think that's a pectoral. It's pectoral. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad you told me that because in my mind, you know, even though there's biceps, it could have been a woman too. Oh, so. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just saying what I'm thinking the artist oh, is trying course. to say. I'm not labeling in any way, absolutely. like body parts, but I'm and just it's think interesting this is because you just define what art is. It's how people <laughs> look at it, right? And yes. we can go around the room and ask 10 people and they would all have a different perception. And that's- well, beauty of and it. that's that's one of the biggest things that i'm constantly working with my students with is do you like it because they always ask do you like this do you like this oh it it doesn't matter to me i'm yeah. i'm i can tell you if i like it or not but it, yeah. what really matters is what are you that trying is, to say that is so you, brilliant that you instill that in them because oh, yeah. They, they, but often, cause my husband's an artist, he'll, mm -hmm. I say the same thing to him. Well, what do you think of it? And he'll say, well, what do you think? You know, and, um, it's not my piece, it's your piece and it shouldn't matter what I say. It shouldn't, it shouldn't. Well, Andy Warhol said, you know, make art, hang it on the wall. And while they're busy deciding if it's good or not, make more art. <laughs> right. Just, just keep just making keep going. Art. Just keep going. Oh, okay. Next. Oh, the, this the is man great. behind this. I, I love this guy. He is fantastic. Uh, one of my artists, um, his whole attitude on life is just, it's just beautiful, uh, free. Definitely. I get the sense that he's one of the original hippies, like oh, really? um, William Landu. Um, and then the, the choices of the words and yeah. coming as you are from like this kind of um, typography setting and he had some other like imagery in there, but he also works in the material that he chooses is like heavy wood. Like this is oh, here. Really? You oh. will be here and look and they're huge. Like this is here. And it's uh, it's fun. It's really fun. Um, I think one of the benefits of going to these openings is meeting the artists, right? Like, oh, you get I, the personality. Of yeah, the personality. But as a young person or somebody just starting out in the arts, you think everyone has their nose up in the air, right? Or, oh, like, am I going to be around these hoity-toity people? And that's not what it is at all. It's this creative breath, right, of, right. of all this interesting persona. Okay, let's see the next one. 
this is ah. a new, new artist to me as well. And this is Melissa Riling. Um, and I just was captivated by the composition and the way that she used her medium, which is, I believe, acrylic. The, the flat work without any value, shading, things like that, right. and just making a statement through vibrant color pattern. And well, it, it vibrant color pattern and contrast, the way right. she's uh, used that uh, wine color within like the turquoise and the, the gray background and everything, what she chose to make uh, pop in the, in the artwork. Very interesting. Yeah, so I'm expecting to see more from this artist as we go along. And I do think it'll be nice to watch their portfolio grow and then to oh represent gosh, yeah. the gallery. Yeah. Yeah. Her work is very happy too. <laughs> oh, okay. Is. Next. Oh, this is a very interesting collage. Yeah. So I actually had the privilege to go through this artist. Um, they call themselves, I want to make sure I get it correct. Um, it's a, it's some, it's, it's like an MX. I don't it's, know. How to... Okay. MX Enigma. And I have to read this. My series on wanted and alive is painting a picture on queer trans folks among other neglected populations, taking up space in vivid motions and expression when they are often silenced or felt unwanted or abandoned by their cis society neighbors, and even blood relatives. Wow. There's a lot of emotion. If you get the chance, uh, they do have a public um, portfolio. So if you get the chance to view this artwork, I do think it's worth the time. It's a, it's a really powerful portfolio. It's a lot of found materials uh, put together in collage, but it's done in such an emotional way that it was um, very important for me to have this represented in the show. Because it's it's not from upstate. It's um, this artist is from New York City, and it's just a totally different way that we would look at materials to to say right. what we wanted to say. Well, he's. I mean, the vibe on here: human is illegal, Black Lives Matter, product of immigrants, um, protect trans kids. This something about drugs. I mean, he's hit on. All, all of the things, all of those talking points yeah. that obviously he has responded to in an incredibly emotional way to communicate through this piece of work. Well, then right. I think, you know, and they, they chose the the one dollar at the top. So all this is only worth yes. a dollar, right? Like yes. just it's a sticker. It's not the value of the artwork, but it's just right. the imagery and then the conversation. Um, so this is a, a public um, as far as I know, you can go on and look at more of this work and, and it's worth it. It's worth it to take a peek at that. Not every artist shows their, their work publicly. So you know what, I'm going to type, um, this person's name <laughs> for me to have to type and do the show at the same time. <laughs> you know, I'm really impressed with what they've done because, um, E N I G M A. And they would, they would prefer to have the at symbol. I put the at okay. symbol there. Yeah. So that that's there. And hopefully that will be in the uh, general when it, when this is up on YouTube. All right. The next one. Okay. Cowboys. So I, <laughs> I love horses. <laughs> I'm oh, obsessed with horses. horses. Judy, throw it yeah. in. <laughs> but it was, it was different. Right. You're looking at all this like, oh, this very like lens of like, you know, um, whatever it is like today. And then you look at the cowboy. Right. You're looking at that classic classic Western kind of person. Right. The one who's out there cattle ranching and, and moving cattle and, you know, taking the land and, and doing all that. And it's it was it needed to be there. It 1000% needed to be there. And you are the curator. It's yeah, your- Yeah, I get to choose. <laughs> and I you get can- to put horses in. Right, and you and I love it. You put the horses in, and um, I know you grew up on a sheep farm, so I yeah. wanted, waiting to, I love sheep. I was waiting to see something with sheep, but you know what? The horses and the cattle will pass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, what's next? 
Interesting. Brand new artist, brand new artist, um, just started out in their career. And um, this is one of their first shows. And this is Richard E. Boy, Bose, B-O-S, Boys, Bose. And um, just a brand new artist, really excited to be here. That's great. And and as you said, you know, some people are brand new and um, very interesting brush strokes. Looks like it could be the head of a bird with yeah. um, a talon, a foot. Again, well, artist, however you see it. Well, titled Phoenix Chicken. So it's when I kind of, I was you were right. very close, but when you think about the Phoenix, right, that's from ashes and right. it's about rising from those ashes. But what does it mean if you're a Phoenix chicken? Are you afraid to rise? Like that was oh, kind no, of, it's my see, I touch something totally different. <laughs> this is so special because look at the colors yeah. on this chicken, that this chicken rose from the Phoenix because he was just with the colors and everything. Better than all the other chickens. Better than I'm all the other chickens. I love it. <laughs> okay. Oh, we still have five photos left and we've got a few minutes. So I'm going to go through these quickly. Okay. What's next? Beautiful. This artist, um, she she's shown with me a few times now. Barbara Carpinero. Carpinero? Carpinito? Sorry. Again, when you have 600 kids. Um, <laughs> again, just absolutely beautiful. Um, when she did contact me, she was, she said, I don't know if this is really, you know, what you're looking for. And I'm like, oh, it's absolutely it's what so I'm looking beautiful. for. Yeah, absolutely. And it, and it's a reflection to me, it was reflection of any inner, um, landscape that was kind of going on. So it, that's kind of how I took it. Yeah. Yeah. An inner landscape. And yeah. I saw it as, um, a sunset happening near the water. An outer landscape. An outer landscape. An That's outer, right. I, it's all I, valid. That's the point. It's all valid. It's Absolutely. All valid. Okay, one. Well, the next one. Okay. Oh, we know who this is. This Jonathan is awesome. Fox. Um, yeah. Probably Bunny Falacoon. Yes. I don't know who this uh, drag artist is. This is somebody from House of Yes. I do know that. And um, yes, Jonathan had uh, a few people from House of Yes in the show, as well as my friend Kay Gorgeous, who I love and adore. And another wonderful drag artist who just got in touch with me because I showed their picture on Facebook. I love this. I love the movement and the joy. And um, of course, House of Yes is you want to talk about art in a nightclub. Amazing the, the what goes on there. OK, next. Oh, Gorgeous. This is, your, this is your artist again. This is, yeah, this is Joseph again. And again, we're just talking about the characters in general, right? Like just so This is going to be the quarantine one, one right? Yeah. Isn't this the quarantine? This is the quarantine. This is the quarantine. And like just the expression in the hand, like, ah, it is what it is. And I'm telling a story. And I got like two cats on my lap or something. Yeah, like, she's you know, got like, two cats on her lap. Someone else is leaning over the fireplace. Yeah, we got a whole the narrative. Line. There's a whole story. This is how we live. It's a snapshot of life. And that's what's beautiful right. about it, really. Great. Absolutely. All right. And the next one. Love this. I Very remember. This show. Yeah. yeah. My yeah. body, my rules. Um, and this is, I had made a note on this artist when I was there. Is this, um, is this Lucy? This is Gail Tushman. Gail Tushman. Yeah. And I, this is my body, my rules is the photograph. I, and it just really made sense. Like we didn't really have that narrative until she submitted her artwork. And then we did, we had that like right in your face, like I'm coming as I am, I'm in my body. It's my rules. Like don't mess with me. And it was a strong, right. the, the work from this photographic series was very strong for the show. And it gave that nice, um, that backbone to the rest of the narrative. Like we're all human beings, like treat us with right. respect and kindness and love. And if you do that, then you're always walking the right path. So it was really important to have that work in there. This one stuck out of my mind. Well, Jody, you won't believe this. We are down to like 30 seconds where you get to say anything that you want to share with our audience. You want to tell them about what you're doing really quick? Yeah, absolutely. So I own Yoga by the Lake, which is a yoga and wellness center. And I hold retreats every second Saturday. This one coming up is on the 15th of April. 
because we had to move it for Easter. But what I do here is we do yoga. It's always gentle. It's always relaxing, either a yoga, gentle, gentle yoga flow, restorative, things like that, because we're focusing on dealing with past trauma. We're focusing on dealing with uh, tension and anxiety and stress, which we're all hit with all the time. And right. how that manifests in the body. And then um, I work through not only the postures, but then what are you working on independently and we bring that into the retreats we bring that into the classes um it's a safe space the retreats are phenomenal they're amazing we do yoga and then we move into creative art so i teach a little bit of art so don't feel like if you want to come and hang out with us like that's fantastic um don't feel like you have to have any experience because i walk everybody through everything so you will be successful and leave with something that you can be proud of um so i'm leaving with something tonight jody you've been such a terrific guest. I knew, I knew that you would be, thank you for, I, I don't know, everything you emanate makes us feel warm and fuzzy and okay. You make it safe. You make it okay. And you let us tap into the creative parts of ourselves. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you for having and, me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And thank you to everybody who tuned in tonight. We'll be back next week. Bye-bye. Bye everybody. <laughs>